Hello everybody, thank you for joining me, this is GGF, bringing you episode 74 of Let's Play Disciples Liberation. We are just about halfway through the 70s, still in batch number 2, uh, recording batch number 2, second time we've played this game, and pretty much binging on it right now, or... I wouldn't say binging, but really enjoying it. Binging would be like playing all these episodes in just a few days, but it's been a bit now of me just focusing on uh, this game. Play maybe two episodes a day type deal. All right, so we're in the path of flesh and flames and we just completed the main part of it last episode by defeating Titans. Go back and check that episode if you'd like. Very cool. I'm going to light up a smoke here. Mm. So now we have Mother Genevieve to talk to. Let's go ahead and see what she says. At the gates of Fort Barunia, as the gates of Fort Barunia open to you, you see its walls now filled with survivors. Upon their faces were once the determined grimaces of warriors ready to die fighting. Now you see them as they always truly are, like you. In you get, Liberator. We've no meat or food, but the hearth is warm, and the soldiers, I mean survivors, are singing your name. Uh. They say you face down titans, and some demon called the Hegumen. In the circles governing demons from the shadows, he was High King of the Scarred and Postulants, demonic names for mortal soldiers. Obviously, our actions here threaten the secret trade between the Vale and the Legion, which got his attention. Indeed. Now, how do you know all that? <laughs> um... I have a feeling she's going to attack me. If I say my armor absorbed his essence. Um... He told me. friends. He told me all about it before I chopped off his head. Genevieve laughs nervously, hopeful that if you're on a spree of beheadings, it's come to an end. Um. We need to get these survivors to Ilion. Indeed. Now, with the demon threat gone and the titans fought back, we have to find a way to get these people to safety. If they stay here, they're as good as dead. We can protect them in Ilion, but to get them there, I need your help. Genevieve scans the huddled, scarred people. It's like she's seeing them for the first time. But the Veil left orders, delivered by the Inquisitor himself. We're to take the path for the Empire and transport everyone here to Fergal City. Fergal City. Do that, and the veil will mark them pure. It doesn't matter that the veil will be in our debt. These people have been through enough. Indeed, Sebastian. Mm, the path is rightfully the realm of Bethrazen. If we return it to demon control... You will have to earn my blood to do it. The path must crumble. Bold words. Very well. I've made my decision. Um. Huh. Grant this realm to the survivors, to the Legion, to the Vale. I claim this land and its people. Um. I guess. Or we could grant the realm to the survivors. Um, I claim this land and its people. A new epoch is upon us. What has come before will be honored, but it will not dictate what the new Nevendar must be. I claim these lands for Alien. You are our people. Our city will be open to you. Any legionaries or mortals who remain, know that I am your leader. 
The survivors look proudly on. They are hopeful but suspicious. Understandable after the lives they've lived. You heard the lady. I know her well, and give my word that she will keep you safe. All of you. Cool. The crowd musters and cheers. They call you Queen of Iron. The world's changing faster than any of us were ready for. Give us old dog's time. We'll catch up. Uh -huh. Speaking of, it looks like I'm in your service now. What will you have me do? Oh, cool. Join us. You are a fine mercenary, and you've proven to be a fine soldier. Join us. <laughs> What'll they call us? The Twilight Triplets? <laughs> uh, not so fast. <laughs> I can see you're fitting in already. Welcome to Ilion, Genevieve. As the others return to their mounts and walk away, you and Genevieve look on at Fort, Fort Barunia. The same questions linger on. Finish the main story of the Path of Flesh and Flame. The same questions linger on both of your minds. Will it withstand the wars to come? For that matter, will you? Quest complete. Genevieve, new unit, new equipment, strong shard of sorrow, queen of iron's crown, minus 10 with the empire, minus 10 with the legions, 370 XP, and another skill point. Absolutely nasty. So, I think we did the right things here. Let's go ahead and come in here and check. Uh, see, we've got the strong shard of sorrow, mild shard of sorrow. Let's check the boots. We've got. Where are they? Okay, deck's pretty nice for tier one. That's for sure. Um, headwear, we've got a chain hood that's rare. And pretty nice for tier one. Queen of Iron's crown, intelligence, crit chance, mana. When held in the hand, this crown seems too heavy to be practical to wear. Yet when worn, it fills the wearer with regal power and terrible resolve. Chain hood. Hmm. Yeah, our epic headband is a little bit better. It does give mana though, which is important. Then we have a cleaver of the hegemon for the head of an unholy abbey for the headless of the heretics. That is a pretty wicked weapon. Um, it's rare. Then we have pants. Pretty decent chain leggings. Two skill points. Mmm. We have new spells. Genevieve is a tier three. Aviana and Orion haven't seen the Twilight Twins since my contracting days. You're looking proud as ever. And Orion, you're looking short. <laughs> now, is she considered a hero? No. She is a normal unit. And she does a uh, cleaving strike. Cleaves an enemy with mighty strength, dealing physical. If the target dies, the Holy Avenger is refunded a gold AP. Oh, she's a Holy Ag uh, Avenger. Consecrate. Range of one, but in an area. Blesses the ground around the Holy Avenger for one round. Dealing divine damage to targets, inflict weakened and slowed on them. Holy Mantle. The Holy Avenger takes 30% less damage from undead and demon units. And back line. Unleashes Holy Energy on the enemy with the lowest HP, dealing divine damage. If Holy Strike defeats the target, it then targets another enemy. Oh, that's nasty. I might have her on the back line, actually. She is pretty wicked. 246 power. Nice 120 initiative. 25% crit. Good resistances. 30 leadership costs. Um, level 27. We can level her up. I'll put her on the back line for... Probably the Warlock. Um, yeah, probably the Warlock. The Warlock, uh, inflicts unholy, inflicts poison, also inflicts cursed. If already afflicted with poison, bleeding or burning. Yeah, I mean, but this one unleashes the holy energy, holy strike, but on the enemy with the lowest HP. 
it deals divine, and if it defeats them, it targets another. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know, that's a tough one. Might have to get rid of the regen. Because we have other healing skills, so maybe let's go with two attack skills like that. I don't know. But from here, uh, let's go ahead and equip to give Genevieve um, a strong shard of zeal, I guess. She's inspired. Try this lineup with the Druid and Pierre. Um, what else? That weapon, uh, she's got better. She's got her Wrath of Heroes. He uses a staff anyway. Bagthal has his weapon. Um, Melantrock has a staff. She's got that. The Viceroy's Blade we can potentially give her. This Dwarven Edge. Cleaver of the Hegemon. Um... a lot of power. Probably give her the Dwarven Edge and rank it up, though. Alright, so from here, we'll exit. Um, I guess we did pretty much all the content here. Um... Come back here, Go then, to the Empire's Fort Barunia. Learn the truth of the veil. Uh, Twilight Fortress. We have this to do yet. Um, we'll come back when we're stronger for this. Uh, for right now, we'll head out. I guess we can always come back is the thing. We'll make sure we can before leaving. Um, let's see. The birthing Bay. I guess that's it here, guys. And it's time to head to the next area. So let's head back to Ilian. And rank up that dwarven edge, perhaps. But we never ranked up Ilmirin's weapon. Whoops, let's go ahead and do that. Wow, this is going to make her much nastier. Bong bong. There it is. 71 power, 24 dex, 26 initiative, 14% crit chance, and divine resist, 250 HP. The Mostanese dagger. I wish someone could use rift. Dwarven Edge, um... Fifty-five hundred... Fifteen dex, fifty power, nine percent crit chance... Um, let's just increase it... And give that to... Uh... I 
I guess her for now. She has Helm Piercer. Um, give you the, the Dwarven Edge. Gains 1 dex, 3 power, 1% crit chance, and 53 HP. And Charlea can use Helm Piercer for now. Or... Cleaver of the Hedgeman, we just have to level it up. Alright, very good, very good. Let's uh, research any spells we have. Let's gather resources. Bong bong, research some spells. Magma Fisher calls forth the fires of the deep for two rounds, dealing primal damage to all units. At a cost of 50 mana, that is pretty crazy. We have what it takes to uh, cast it. Or research it. Let's go ahead and make that. Let's put that on the list here. Um, probably go for Salonial's Mist. Alright. Very good. Train Companions. Train Genevieve for 2400. 39. Um... Very good. Meet companions. Talk to Ilmirin. You find Ilmirin whispering to her falcon. She turns to you. Am I interrupting? Not necessarily. I was discussing with my friends here the nature of mortality. They insist it's not that bad. And what do you think now that you have first-hand experience? I disagree with them. Naturally. What is your opinion of it? Death keeps me humble. Death tempers my wilder tendencies. It keeps me humble, and I like to think it keeps me wise. Humility and wisdom sounds thrilling. Well, you answered my question for today. Do you have one for me? Um... What do you keep to yourself? You never seem to leave this place to interact with the other citizens of Ilion. Wouldn't a little conversation do you some good? You are more than enough, Aviana. Everyone else is so concerned with being heard, they don't ask themselves if they have anything to say. Well, spectacular chat as always. Till our next friendly tit for tat. Okay, um. Orion, uh. Let's. I'm really tired, guys, if I'm kind of slurring my speech and stuff. Just really tired. Um, Shadowcaster. Possessed. Oh my gosh, what is that purple weapon? Dwarven Edge, pretty nice. Oh my gosh, Vicious Blade, very vicious. What is this? Majestic Scepter, epic. Wow, many a crusade has been led by a holy disciple where wielding a scepter. That is crazy for tier one. Oh my gosh. We can give that to Sebastian, but we don't have the money. Unfortunately, we are well shy of 8k. Hopefully it'll be there when we come back. Um, Alright, let's talk to Orion, I guess. Hey, Abby. Let's look at the map we head for. Ah, Italian and Wotan's grave. Italian, before the war, the clans in the Empire shared Italian. It was a symbol of what might happen when two races work together toward peace. That symbol, symbol has since shattered. Wotan's grave. Wotan was once a mighty god of the dwarven people. Murdered by Mortis, here is where his body fell. From his corpse, mana springs, both which both the elves and the second woken one for themselves. We'll go to Wotan's grave. Difficulty easy, though. Alright, let's go, son. In the far distance, you spy the festering corpse of the god Wotan, and you feel you owe it both awe and revulsion in equal measure. Wotan's grave. A rotting god's corpse crawling with the restless dead. <laughs> Ugh. And my disgust with this world is finally complete. <laughs> Lovely. 
Well, it's not the nicest neighborhood, but the rents are reasonable. <laughs> the nightlife is so dead, though. <laughs> Come on, Abby. Don't do my jokes, but better. It's all I have. <laughs> A hollow voice reverberates. You don't so much hear it as feel it shake through your bones. Too soon. So very long. Dawn and dusk both. Approach if you're ready. Who said that? Um. Whoever you are, show yourself. Who? Uh, Abby, did you hear something? You look around. The others stare at you in surprise. Did no one hear that? You have much to see, Eventide. If you are ready. Huh. What should I be ready for? Ready for what? The others now look at you with concern. Aviana, are you well? Huh. Who are you speaking to, child? This feels wrong. The death here is wrong. Death should feel right. <laughs> Come, gloaming child. Bring light to darkness and shadow to luminance. Why don't you hear it? I can't be the only one who hears the voice. It's nearly deafening. The others look at you. Concern, pity, derision play across their various faces. But you find for a moment you cannot recognize them. <clears throat> Everything seems dimmed. Well, every beast and bastard for leagues knows we're here now. <laughs> Sky madness. Drink water. <laughs> this is not the place to show weakness, Aviana. The undead swarming the god's corpse will not coddle you. Look, if Avi says something is wrong, then something is wrong. Everyone stay quiet. The echoes seem to rattle your teeth inside of your skull. Then they subside. The dimness passes. You are yourself again. Ready to carry on? I... I'm fine. Oh. To me, you seem wild-eyed and sweat-soaked. <laughs> Maybe one of the healers could... Does anyone have a spell or potion or, or, or something that... We're moving on. Too much fighting and not enough drinking lately. I'm fine now, Ori. Promise. Alright, meet the elves and second Woken controlling this realm. Now, before I go anywhere... I want to go back to Ilion and make sure I can return to... Uh, the previous area. We can. Okay, good. We can head to all the previous areas. We can even head to... Oh, yeah. Wotan's grave. Verontor. Um, was there anything left there? I don't remember. In Veron's tomb? Um, let's just head back to Wotan's. Alright, cool. So we can save here. See how long we've been playing. Um, 23 minutes. Alright, let's go. What do we have here? Palma, de Viscount of Neferis. Attendi Altendie, Altendian, the key bearer. You can't talk. You can talk to me, not them. You spot an elf standing near a pen of undead prisoners. She looks around at your approach and starts guiltily. She recognizes you. Abby, that's one of the elves that held us captive in the White Lands. Oh. The jailer's eyes dart nervously as she takes in your numbers and weapons. That... that was a misunderstanding. Uh, but perhaps a fortunate one? L let me explain. First explain what you're doing with these penned-up undead elf. <laughs> He's funny. Um, you'd better talk fast. Your explanation had better be good, Jailer. Yeah, when I pass out and wake up in a cell, I like Ale to be involved first. <laughs> we had no choice. We intercepted communication that our mana flows were going to be targeted. We suspected outsiders like you. Ridiculous. The Jailer shifts nervously. But after you escaped, we captured a messenger and interrogated him. Meaning you tortured him. Gift me this dog's blood. 
We found out it was the undead here in Wotan's grave who are targeting us. But we don't know what they're planning. This can still end well. You're obviously resourceful. If you helped us combat this plot, we could reach an agreement. To, uh, compensate you for the earlier misunderstanding. Huh. Fine, but our help doesn't come cheap. We'll help you stop the undead's attack, but it will cost you. The jailer visibly relaxes. Of course, of course. To discover what the undead are plotting, perhaps it would be best if you tried to get the information from them yourself? You are rather intimidating. <laughs> oh, you think that's bad? This is her when she's being nice. <laughs> You're one to talk. All right, let's talk to the undead. Interrogate the captives, the suckling hordes. Um, I want to free them. You approach the pen of undead, several shambling and mindless corpses mill about inside. Some try to claw at you through the bars to little effect. A gaunt-looking vampire stands apart from the group slightly. Intelligence gleams in her eyes as she stares through the bars at you. Ah, so our tepid-blooded little host has pets, does she? Here to do elven bidding? Tell us what you're planning. There are innocent lives involved, not just combatants. Tickle us with your feeble tortures if you're going to, but spare me your prattle. The hum of your veins is already deafening. Uh... Help me protect the innocent. Leave the battle on the battlefield. Show mercy to the innocents caught in the conflict, and I can convince the elves to show mercy to you. There is no such thing as innocence, you sack of wasted blood. There is meat, and there are butchers. Huh. I like this one. <laughs> um, you're, star you're starving. Talk and I'll feed you. You can linger in that cage if you want, but you're wasting away. If you tell me what I need to know, I'll have the elves bring you some sheep's blood. <laughs> the vampire's eyes light up at the promise of blood. No, not sheep. Give me elf blood. They can spare some, surely. No. Sheep's blood or thirst? The vampire claws at herself in frustration. After an agonizing moment, her need visibly wins over her resolve. I'll tell you. Just let me drink. My name is Pelma. I was part of a force sent to harvest mana from the corpse of the fallen god. There are caves beneath Wotan's grave. We were to extract and poison the mana. Huh. Poisoned mana? The suppliers, warlocks, they devised runes that could corrupt the mana. Once we mine the tunnels, we are to plant the runes in the elves' mana fountains above ground. The ones that feed their villages. All their villages. Huh. That would kill hundreds! Thousands! Children use those mana springs! The vampire smiles horribly. Yes, they do. Wow. You fools! We need to block those tunnels. Then the tunnels will be your tomb. You turn your back on the vampire, she wails for blood behind you. Orion tries very hard not to shudder, and you pretend not to notice. Find the mine entrance below Wotan's body. Um, Altendian. The leader of the group we apprehended, a vampire woman, has so far refused to speak. To you, perhaps. There are warlocks using runes to poison the mana spewing from Wotan's chest. I'm going to find them. Alright, so we're dealing with warlocks. Wotan's hand. Wotan's hand. That's funny sounding. Really? I don't know how Aviana deals with you sometimes. Oh, there's Wotan's hand. Pretty wild. Iron. 3k iron. An iron mine for free. It's an iron mine for... 425 per hour. Um, Emder, mother of many. Suspicious guards. It's a quick save. Um, come down and check out Emder. Dead trees and fields of burnt stumps suggest that once this land was lush and expansive, now it shrinks and withers. The forests rose. 
It was my home. And as its druid, I was its ward. As you draw near the trees, a ghostly figure flickers into view between the dead trunks. Was the forest always like this? It's hard to imagine anyone living in this place. It's so desolate. The trees were thick, beautiful. They whispered together of ages past and drank from roots older than gods. Wow. Very descriptive writing in this game. What happened here? Not fire. The forests almost seem destroyed intentionally. By war and failure. The world's war and my failure. Before meeting you, I gave my life to avenging it. Uh, we're being watched. Something's stalking us. The figure is silent and almost otherworldly. You get the feeling that you have only spotted it because it wants you to see it. Emder, you have aged. Melindra, at first I didn't recognize you. You carry the smell of the blood of innocence. Uh. No one is innocent anymore. So, two things. First, you know this cat, and second, cats talk now? <laughs> this is Emder. You would know her as a were leopard. This is but one of her forms. And this is the liberator that even the birds sing of? The were leopard winces in pain. What are you? You're not like any were leopard I've met before. I am one of the mothers, the first of the forest beasts. The others are gone. I was the mistress of this forest. It was innocent. The trees and meadows knew no sin. Melendrach and I failed them. Uh, are you alone? It seems all the other animals have left. The children. The children have gone. Some did. Some fled to die elsewhere when their madness is spent. Is it possible you still care for them? For the creatures and trees? Melanjok is silent. You're hurt. Your breathing is weak. You're wincing. Show us your wound. We may be able to heal it. The forest is my wound. These are its last days. And with it, I will die. No, we will go to the elves. They squander phoenix seeds on medicines for wounded soldiers. Then the soldiers go forth and create more wounds. Melanjok turns to you. By the seasons of my body, I beg you. The seeds were stolen from the forest's rose to supply warriors. We must find them. Huh. Emder rests in the charred grass. Her breathing is heavy. Melandrox's plea hangs heavily on you. Seek the phoenix seeds at the elven camp. Pretty cool. Here we have forgotten forges. Elven pack guarding a chest but man do they look tough um it's a quick save how long have we been playing oh oh dear undead minions there's a yeah I'd give them a shot oh we can conquer them just as easy 500 gold. We have two skill points to spend. Um, let's go spend those. The level 30, we get Twilight Pulse. At the end of each of Aviana's turn, she sends a wave of Twilight Energy all around her, healing allies and damaging enemies within one tile of Aviana. That takes 30 points. So, um, Commander's Presence, passive abilities of Aviana now affect all allies on the battlefield. Aviana gains one movement and damage taken from area of effect is reduced 15%. Always has incorporeal. Increased damage to bosses by 5% and increased healing from unspent AP at the end of each turn by 
Um, the Undead Hordes. Beth resents Boon. Command the Demons. 5% more HP for the Demons. Sure. We have Pierre now, I guess. And then we'll go with Aviana. Always has Incorporeal in battle. It can't be removed. Bong bong. Very nice. And she is getting wicked cool. Wicked tough. Um, I think I'm going to take a little bit of a nap here, guys. We have undead. We have mostly elves, but we do have a human legion of the damned. He gained his 5% HP. We have another demon. She gained some HP. We have a human here, which we can replace if need be. Another Elf Warden. Human Empire unit, Sebastian. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for more. We'll get more into it next time and explore Wotan's grave. Uh, be well, stay well, live well, guys. Hope you're doing well. Um... Much love, peace, and joy. Sorry I'm dipping out a little early, but I'm very tired. I don't think I can make a quality episode right now. But um, we did play for 36 minutes. A little, little short, but it's all good. So next time, guys, we'll get into more combat. I'll see you then. We'll explore Wotan's grave. Going to be a lot of fun, so come on back. As I said, much love, peace, and joy to you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.